Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of We Win with T-Win. I apologize for in advance, or I guess post-advance, for the bit of a quiet introduction today. The link that I was going to use for the music did not work, and so unfortunately there was no music to introduce tonight's show. I'm going to begin by giving a little summary of where we were yesterday. Yesterday we talked a little bit about friction and its importance for the scientific laws of success. Today's show is called Idioms of Success. And what Idioms of Success means is uh, an, a basic explanation of success ideas and expressions across cultures and putting it into a simple universal language. It's really important to take these common everyday expressions and break them down into simpler ideas. And today we're going to talk about what live in the now, what that means. And it's it's a very common expression. I got a little excited when I wrote about this and I easily can do two or three or four hundred shows all discussing about live in the now. We're going to get started. I'm going to go a little bit into first the history of the expression. So let's take a look here. So, historically, live in the now is an interesting expression because its origins are somewhat unknown. It's a bit of a proverbial expression. Uh, Emily Dickinson had a poem in 1292. Let's see if I can pull it up here for you. Emily Dickinson wrote about it in her, in her 1292 poem. Dickinson, 1292 poem. Let's, let, me, let me pull that up here. In this short life that lasts only an hour, how much, how little, is within our power. It's a really remarkable poem. Uh, and, and Emily Dickinson was in the uh, mid-1800s that she was around. Bill Keen wrote an expression that uh, you might be familiar with. Let's see if I can find Bill Keen's expression here. Uh, I had all these notes. I had them all prepared. <clears throat> Well, you've probably heard it from the more famously Kung Fu Panda, but yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift, and that's why it's called the present. Bill Keen wrote about it in 1994. Uh, that is why it is called the present quote. I want to get it exact, that's why I'm looking it up for you, just one second here. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift of God, which is why it is called the present. So that come, came from a Bill Keen cartoon in Family Circus. Alice Morse Earl wrote about it in a in a story that she put together. Her story, I, I you know, for the life of me, I had all my notes in one location, ah, oh, and then I forgot where I put them. Well, that's okay. Alice Morse Earl, she wrote about how time waits for no man. And that's in a, a, a book she wrote that starts with the title Sundials. I forget the rest of it right now. I'll get back to you on that. Maybe post it in the notes. Eleanor Roosevelt also had some interesting quotes on it. She mentioned that today is a gift in a speech that she gave once. Let's see here. It is a, it is a rather old expression, though. What I'm finding is that this, this idea of living in the now, it, 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 it transcends across a lot of cultures, a lot of history behind the expression, a lot of culture behind it. And there we are. Oh, I see. Now I see why I got confused. Too many different places. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit further back, though. These are the more modern ones. If we go a little bit further back and we look at the, the cultural history of this expression, it is quoted around the world. In the Bhagavad Gita, it, which is the sacred text for Hindus, it says, whatever happened in the past, it happened for the good. Whatever is happening is happening for the good. And whatever shall happen in the future shall happen for the good only. Do not weep for the past. Do not weep for the future. Concentrate on your present life. It is an old Jewish proverb. I do not have any confirmation that this is, in fact, a true Jewish proverb. I'm using the glorious internet. But one that is really good that I liked here. Many people's lives are fueled by the things they have yet to get over, trying to prove things to people who have already moved on. It is quoted from the Buddha that the secret for health, 
Of health for mind and body is not to mourn the past, nor to worry about the future, but to live the present moment wisely and earnestly. In the Quran, there is a really great quote. If I can find it, there it is. Oh, where, did, where did I put my... There it is. And it may be that you dislike a thing that is good for you, and that a thing that is better... Uh, no. Oh, I'm on part two. That's why it was in part one. Verily, in the remembrance of God, do hearts find rest. That's Quran 13, verse 28. So in the Quran, it quotes it, but we got more in the Bible. Matthew 6, 25 to 34, somewhere in there. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In the Analects of Confucius, he says, Don't worry about being acknowledged by others. Worry about failing to acknowledge them. An old African proverb is, hurrying and worrying are not the same as strength. Hurrying and worrying are not the same as strength. There are so many quotes where this expression comes from and, and, and its meaning. Uh, let me pull up a few more for you. I was just, I, I dabbled around and, and looked as best I could. Let's see here if I can go to my presentation. There we are. David Suzuki says, without accepting the fact that everything changes, we cannot find perfect composure. But unfortunately, although it is true, it is difficult for us to accept it. Because we cannot accept the transience, we suffer. Mahatma Gandhi said, there is nothing that wastes the body like worrying. And one who has faith in God should be ashamed to worry about anything whatsoever. The Dalai Lama's quote, when we meet real tragedy in life, we can react in two ways, either by losing hope and falling into self-destructive habits, or by using the challenge to find our own inner strength. Khalil Gibran, a wonderful writer from the 20th century, the deeper that sorrow cars into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? Just a few last ones here. We consume our tomorrows, fretting about our yesterdays. That's by Perseus. Nothing in the affairs of men is worthy of great anxiety. And that's by Plato. The focus of living in the now is about focusing your presence, your attention on exactly where you are. It's about taking your ideas and living them where you are right now. So I want you to just take a little bit of time right now to think about times when you were worrying. Actually, before we get to that, before we get to that, I just want to comment a little bit about the presence of this, this notion of living in the now. As you notice, a lot of my quotes refer, revolved around the concept of worry. Making sure my audio is on here. There we go. Living in the now is a lot about living a life stress-free. It's about living your life in the present. And what's amazing is that this concept dates back to the Analects of Confucius and the Gita and Christianity. It's in Proverbs. It's in the Quran. It goes back thousands of years. And it's across cultures, whether you're from East Asia or from Africa or from North or South America, wherever you're from, the concept of living life in happiness and letting go of the stresses and worries that come upon your life, that notion is not a new notion. It is something to which we all can relate something to which we all can experience. Let me just zoom in a little there. That's a little better. So that's something to remember. Worrying is something that is very common, it's very, uh, very easily emphasized all around the world as something that we need to let go, something that we need to remove from our lives. And uh, I remember this really cool quote. It's from the movie Van Wilder's when I heard it first. It's, worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. So now let's take some time and let's think about when worrying was in our lives. So think back to a time when you were really anxious and you were really worried. Perhaps, you, perhaps your anxiety was over something that had already happened. Something that took place in your past. Something of which you no longer had the ability to do anything about. Perhaps you were worried of the safe travels of a loved one. Or you were worried over the completion of a project or homework assignment. Perhaps you were worried about how you were going to pay 
your bills, which is actually a worry towards the future. If you notice, worry is never about something that's happening right now. It's never about something that happens in the present moment. When you live in the now, you become free from worry. You release yourself from that worry. And you then allow yourself to find joy. Joy comes from living in the now. I remember I was preparing a dinner. I host dinners every Saturday with my friends whenever we can. I was hosting a dinner once and my really close best friend, uh, he... He was helping me prepare some what we call uh, potato fries. You know, you take the potato and you put it in the in a in a deep fried dish with a little bit of oil and you cook it over a barbecue. I have the habit, if, for those who know me, of working really quickly and efficiently, and I'm always ready to get tasks done as quickly as I can. He turned to me and he said, "Justin, you need to love each potato. You need to focus your attention on those potatoes." And you need to love each one as if it was your own child. Love that potato as you turn it over, as you flip it from one side to the other. Take your time and enjoy cooking the potatoes. I remember I was also told another time a woman who focused on cleaning. And she focused on scrubbing the floor. And not doing it in a way that was you know, idiosyncratic. She was loving the floor. Taking the time to find joy and love in, in that moment. I remember my mother was, she tells me the story often of when she was working at a, uh, she worked in an office and they had to type up all these letters and she typed up thousands of letters and then they brought her another pile and she decided she was going to do them one at a time. She was going to focus her attention because in those days they had typewriters. So there was no backspace. You had to do it perfectly. So she took time and loved each and every single letter. Think of some times of joy now. Think of some times where you found joy. I know for myself, when I'm in the presence of children, it's very easy to find joy. Children think only about what's in front of them. They think about where they are and who they're with, and they focus their attention into the now, into who is with them right now. I was watching this television show called uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. It's a cartoon for children. And there's a really cool quote by Uncle Iroh in there. He, One of the kids he says you know i think we might have to make a life for ourselves in this new city and and i don't want to make a life for myself here and his uncle said to him you know everywhere you look there you are everywhere you look there you are so we're going to take a little bit of time and uh, after the break and we're going to explain what that means and i want you to think of some of these things the the stresses in your life they're almost inevitably about things that are coming later you're worried about something that's going to happen tomorrow later today something that happened yesterday those are stresses that are not needed in your life it's important to think about those things in the right context. It's important to focus your energy and your time in the present moment. Take time, like my friend said, to love each potato. As you're turning your your tasks in life, take the time to enjoy each task. Focus on nothing else but the task that is right in front of you. Be mindful of your time constraints. Be mindful of where you are, but focus on exactly where you are. And you'll find that there's a lot of joy to be had in that. Now, we're going to take a small break. So let me see if I can find something to entertain you with. I'm looking for... Uh, it's one of my friends. He's, the band's called the Van Danglers. And for the life of me, I've not been finding it. Let's have a look here. Maybe it's just lower in the... In the list. Well, I guess we're going to have to go through something else. So, for now, I'm going to put on a little bit more of uh, one of my friends, Walter. Been featuring him all week. And I'm very grateful to him for allowing me to share his music with you. Right now, today, I'm going to produce a cover. Walter did a few covers. Let's see if I can choose one. How about Taking Care of Business? Yeah, that sounds like something we could do in the present moment. So I'll throw that on for you. Every morning from your alarm clock, sworn and take the 815 into the city. There's a whistle up above and people pushing, people shoving, and the girls who try to look pretty. If your train's on time, you can get to it by nine. It's slaves slave, your job to get your pay. Do you ever get it? I'm so 
I don't love to work and nothing all day. I'll be taking 